In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. If you can just like, there's a little bullet in there. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters, scattered throughout the world, to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep this memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph for, over death and living with him in God. The lighting of the Easter, or the blessing of the Easter fire. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of the candles. We'll start with uh, West Brooklyn's. Just hold it up here. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever and ever. By his holy <coughs> and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Christ yesterday, Christ yesterday and today, beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. By his holy, glorious wounds. Christ the Lord, guard us. And protect us. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him and all the ages to him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Try to light it since we get inside. So, uh, uh, Don and uh, Andrew, you could just set this uh, fuse on the uh, set the candles on that pew in the back, and we'll take them to West Brooklyn for the, the mass tomorrow. Okay. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Okay, and I need Okay, can you just follow me inside, Pauline? You can just set them on the inside pew.
you just set these on the side there. May the light of Christ rise in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. I invite you to join me in procession. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Exalt. Lift up your heart. 
Let us meditate on how God, in times past, saved his people. And in these days, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this pastoral work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. I invite you to extinguish your candles and be seated for the first reading. We'll have four readings from the Old Testament. After each proclamation of the, of the readings, then we'll have a psalm, and then we'll stand for the prayer of the church. reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was, and God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. And then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. The evening came, the morning followed, the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth. The basin of water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit within its seed. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times of the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came, morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters, and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply in the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. And then God said, that the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, 
cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our own likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God bless them, say, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and of all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it, to be your food, to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it. Very good. Evening came and morning followed. The sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he at our day. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who are wonderful in ordering of all your works, may those who have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. Reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac, two of his servants as well. With the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey. The boy and I go on when we're younger. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked down together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said, Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued. Here are the fire and the wood. But where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered. God himself will provide the sheep for the holocaust. And then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place which God had told him to, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next he tied up his son Isaac, put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you do not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yahir. And hence people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, and not withholding from me your own beloved son, I will bless you abundantly, and make your descendants as countless as the stars in the sky, the sands and the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obey my command.
Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through this pastoral mystery made your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore. Grant me, pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them. Christ our Lord. Then Moses and 
the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for his gloriously triumphant horse and chariot he is cast into the sea. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font, the nations delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations, obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your Spirit, through Christ our Lord.
son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground, because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations by dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. When they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. And thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, this is the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from all the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts, and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you, and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal life, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church. Serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world now know and see that what was cast down is raised up. What had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us pray. O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. Now you can see we're on page 727 in your lectionary, 727. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him, through a death life is. 
We shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be slavery and sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin, if then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At daybreak, 
on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. When they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. He said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remember his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven, to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles. But their story seemed like nonsense. And they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down, and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Easter. Are you unaware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death. So that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. many things that I like about the San Damiano Cross is that it allows me to see the body of Christ. The luminous white body of Christ against the background of black, reddish orange, makes this flat icon appear to be three-dimensional, as if the body of Christ was coming out toward us. But I see this body of Christ every day when I celebrate the Mass. I hold the Eucharist in my hand, the body of Christ. And I realize what the truth is. The question that has befuddled mankind from Pontius Pilate on Holy Thursday morning, 2,000 years ago, to the culture of death in our own times. The truth is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that the second person of the Trinity was born a man, that he offered up his life for all of us. The truth is that Jesus suffered and died and rose from the dead. That's the The truth is that the Eucharist is the body and blood, the soul and divinity of God's Son. I see that truth every day. But the cross that Jesus that spoke to St. Francis 
shows me the body of Christ in its totality. I not only see our Lord's magnificent resurrected body, but I also see you. And I see all who have been baptized into his death and resurrection when I look at the cross. You are in the San Damian cross. And I see you. In a pre-pandemic world, each of us was deprived of seeing the body of Christ in its totality, in its fullness. For they said, only 30% of Catholics came to Mass on a weekly basis, pre-pandemic. And now, in the post-pandemic world, we see even fewer Catholics who live their faith. Although the bulletin is sent to every household of our community on a weekly basis, that at least the potential of learning more about our faith would be had. Although we announce the name of the living member of the body of Christ for whom we pray the Mass on a daily basis, still our eyes are blind to seeing the body of Christ in its totality. But when we look at the sun down the other cross, because this cross is an icon, because we look into heaven when we gaze upon it. It is there. We see the body of Christ in its totality. Yes, we look at Jesus and we see his passion, we see his death, we see him resurrected, and we see Jesus' ascension in glory when we look at the sun down on the cross. But we also see all of our Lord's brothers and sisters, those who have been baptized. I see you when I look at the sun down the cross. I call your attention to the border of the cross. What do you see? You see all the many seashells, the bivalves, that line the whole perimeter of the cross. They go all the way around. Each one of those shells represents one of the baptized. You, your family members, your friends, your enemies. They're all here. If they've been baptized, the iconographer included them in the San Damian cross. Notice they go all the way around the perimeter of the cross. Not one shell is missing, no gaps. An image of how we will stand shoulder to shoulder in heaven with our brothers and sisters. Those who've been baptized. For remember the king's will in the parable? The king wanted to throw a wedding feast for his son. And so he told his servants, go out quickly into the streets and alleys and bring in here the bad and the good alike, that my banquet hall would be filled for my son's wedding feast.
Jesus is the servant of the Father. Keep his life. I've been teaching you how to read an icon in this land. Remember how we said, color is everything in an icon, everything. Color is a symbol, and symbols have meaning. Black means death. Sin leads only to death. The reddish orange means resurrection. The red of Christ's blood. The orange of the rising sun. Reddish orange means resurrection. And the white means life. thin white line of the reddish orange bar of the black coffin the transept of the sun down the cross yes the passion, death, resurrection and ascension and glory of Jesus are here but so also is your lifespan written in this cross each one of you baptized, I can see your lifeline when I look at the sun down here. We read in the sun down here on the icon that when a child goes under the water three times in baptism, he dies. In baptism, we die with Christ. We visit Jesus in the tomb, the place where our Lord spent three days after he was taken down from the cross on Calvary. But then, just as Jesus Christ was resurrected, so also is the baptized baby. And so coming up out of the water, resurrection, the baby is given new life. says at the baptism. Do you remember when your son and daughter were baptized? A great day in your life was not. When you gave to your children 
children the gift of eternal life. None of the priests said it. The priest said it. Every father I've ever baptized, their boy or their girl, gave me a curious glance. What do you mean, father? A baby will never die. The priest says that. Because the baby has already died. white line skirting the black box is short. For even if we live a hundred years, life is fleeting. But above that first white line, notice there's another black line. And notice it's not as thick as the black tomb of Christ. Can you follow me? Black death. Orange, red, resurrection. White And what's above the reddish orange line now? But another white line. And that white line goes all the way around the perimeter of the cross. It has no beginning, it has no end. That line represents eternal life. The life you will spend in heaven with God. Rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let us spend the next 50 days celebrating the resurrection, the ascension, and the glory of our Lord, that he has won now a new life for us. He has won eternal life for us. This night, we who have been baptized, we have been assured of eternal life. Jesus Christ, even now, allows us to see what the body of Christ truly looks like. Don't listen to the world. They would rather you stay in the dark. Listen to the Catholic Church, who says the light of Christ can never be extinguished from your life. When you look at the San Damiano Cross, you see the body of Christ. The same way God the Father sees the body of Christ. You see the Son. You see all people that Jesus Christ won. You were baptized. Look at me tonight.
Hang this cross on your wall at home. Look at it off. Look at the body of Christ. And the glorious part that you have to play in. Because you were baptized. You never know death. Okay. See, friends, let me see, see. Guardian angels, our Lady of Sorrows. I invite you to stand before the blessing of our Father. My brothers and sisters, friends, let us humbly invoke on this bond the grace of God and let him honor that those from whom they are born anew may be numbered among the children of adoption in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, friends, let us humbly beseech the Lord God to bless this water that be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptisms. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people. Keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us to recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless us. For you created water to make the fields fruitful, to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. And through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the promise proclaimed the new covenant. You were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature, the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptisms we have received. We grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter who receive their baptisms. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Stand and we'll relight our baptismal candles as we profess our creed.
I invite Nathan and his sponsor to come forward. Nathan, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward with your sponsor and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. And since each one of us has been baptized, we'll uh, uh, profess the baptismal creed and, and just have it in I do for, uh, fashion. And you'll say the creed uh, with Nathan as he enters into the fullness of our faith. My brothers and sisters in Christ, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in a newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observances are concluded, let us renew the promises of our holy baptisms by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And so I ask each one of you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. We are proud to profess it. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Nathan, I'll ask you now to uh, promise to be true to that faith that we've all recited with you. I believe in the best honor of the Holy Catholic Church that we use teachers and things to be good right now. Nathan chose for his uh, confirmation name, his saint name, Saint Augustine. Augustine, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this family. All powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your son from sin and gave him new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon him now to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill him with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Augustine has already been united to Christ through baptism, and now with thanksgiving to God, 
we have received him into full communion of the Catholic Church. With his confirmation this very evening, he has received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And soon he will share with us at the table of our Lord as we rejoice at the reception of our newest remembrance of the Catholic Church that he will receive the Eucharist with us. And join, so now we join with him in asking for God's mercy and the mercy of his, and grace of the Savior. We'll pray our prayer that St. Francis uh, composed before the crucifix together. O most high and glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart. Give me, Lord, a firm faith, sure hope, perfect love, profound humility, the sign and knowledge so that I may carry out all of your commandments. Amen. For Augustine, whom we have welcomed today as one of us, that he may have the help and the guidance of the Holy Spirit to persevere faithfully in the choice that he has made, we pray to the Lord. Pray for all who believe in Christ, all who have been baptized in our church community, that we may come to perfect unity as we come Sunday after Sunday to receive the gift of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church in which we were first baptized. Praying gratitude to our parents, our godparents, and the priest who baptized us that we who are receiving our formation as Christians may grow ever stronger in our knowledge of Christ and his great love for us and proclaim him more effectively in our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have their Catholic faith snuffed out, those who dwell in the darkness of error and sin. We pray that the fullness of truth in Christ Jesus would shine upon them and they would return to our church through the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for those who have yet to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that they may enter the way of salvation by the light of the Holy Spirit and come joyfully to our altar. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all people, especially those who are sick, that they would be given good health. Those who are poor, that they would be freed from their hunger. Those who undergo the scourge of war, that they would live in peace and tranquility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We always pray for our beloved dead, in a special way at this Mass, for Lynn Peterson and for Charles Keeble, who died this day. Pray for all of the deceased, especially those buried in our Catholic cemeteries. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We never forget to pray for our baby as we undergo a nine-month novena for them, that they would have safe birth, mother and child. So we call out, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, we love you very much. I beg you to spare the life of James, the unborn baby that I have spiritually adopted, who is in danger of abortion. Amen. We call out a Hail Mary prayer to Our Lady of Sorrows and Our Lady of Perpetual Help. That she would always help us to understand our faith, to see clearly that we make up the body of Christ as does the person standing next to us. So we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, we ask you to hear our prayers that we offer, that you may continue to be loving and good to us as we try to give you humble service after the model of your Son. Grant this through Christ our Lord. And you can extinguish your candles and we'll have the preparation of the altar.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken up the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. And therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Do therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially the parishioners of Our Lady Perpetual Help Sublette, the parishioners of St. Mary the Assumption Church, West Brooklyn, and the parishioners of St. Patrick Church, Maytown. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. And therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those who have been pleased, you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. And the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially Lynn Peterson, Charles Keeble, all buried in our Catholic cemeteries. They've gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To the rest, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. And therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia. Now we get to prayer, spiritual communion prayer, that many of our brothers and sisters would partake of these same graces that we do. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since other people dear to me, cannot now receive you sacramentally. I ask you to come at least spiritually into their hearts. As though you're already in our hearts, help us to embrace you and unite ourselves wholly to you. Permit not that we should ever be separated from you. Amen. We'll have uh, Nathan come forward and receive Holy Communion first.
no prayer for gratitude. My Jesus, I love and adore you. You have come to me, and I am one with you. I want you to remain with me forever, in this life and in the next. Thank you for allowing me to share your divine life. May I become more like you through this sacred food. And let me never take you for granted, but always pray for those whose lives are dark with sin and ignorance and selfishness. Let me remember in the words of St. Paul that there but for the grace of God go I. Each day I can become more like you, O Lord, and each day I can pray for those who've never heard of your presence in the Eucharist or who have heard it and rejected it. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's East, solemn Easter blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may God, who has restored you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, a prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>